Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In the last class, we had looked at uh, how uh, nozzle performance is and uh, we had initially made a simple one dimensional steady flow approximation and we had also looked at what are the shortcomings of it. Till the last class, we did not bother ourselves about what kind of uh, rocket engine are we talking about that is liquid, solid or hybrid. From this class on, let us look at uh, solid propellants for the first few classes and then we will go to liquids and then to hybrids. Okay. So, a uh, solid propellant rocket In this both the fuel and oxidizer are in solid phase and that is why this name that uh, solid propellant rocket. As I had said earlier. Uh, this puts a restriction on the kind of chemicals that we can use for solids and uh, for the fuel and oxidizer and therefore, the performance of solid propellants are going to be slightly inferior to those of liquids. Okay. Now, let us look at how a solid rocket motor looks like and what are the parts in it, how do they function.
Now this is the typical sketch of a solid propellant motor. You will have something known as the propellant grain. It is usually referred to as uh, grain here. Uh, then um, you will have something known as a port wherein the combustion takes place and the propellant burns in this direction. Now you also have uh, an igniter to initiate the combustion okay it uh, and then uh, once the uh, igniter is supplied with the electrical input uh, this burns and uh, causes the ignition of the propellant. Once the propellant burst uh, starts to burn then gases get released from uh, uh, these surfaces okay. And because we have a throat here right what happens is these gases uh, uh, tend to build up the pressure inside the port okay and uh, once uh, the pressure is above a certain value compared to the exit pressure the flow will be choked and we know that for a choke flow uh, we know that mass flow rate is given by m dot is equal to right or in other words I can also get uh, the chamber pressure from this equation depending on what is the mass flow rate through the nozzle. So in a sense this is a self pressurized system you do not need any pressurization system to take it to high pressures okay. So this is a self pressurization pressurized system and uh, it operates at uh, high pressures of uh, in excess of 70 bar or something like that and then once the propellant starts burning the gases are produced and there will be a stage when the mass that is produced by the burning of the propellant is equal to the mass that is flowing through the throat that will indicate the steady operating conditions okay. <coughs> now if you look at a small section here close to the casing it will look like this you will have a propellant grain and then a layer of insulation Okay. So there is a layer of insulation between the casing and the propellant okay. Now let us look at uh, each of them in a little more detail if you look this has also something known as a inhibitor. Now an inhibitor this prevents combustion from taking place in this direction normal to this surface. So there will be no combustion in this uh, direction okay. So this prevents combustion from taking place in this direction because this propellant is also exposed to hot gases so this could burn okay. And uh, whenever you do not want a surface to regress which is exposed you can apply an inhibitor and that will prevent fr combustion from taking place in that direction. Now there is also something known as an insulation here, insulation all of you must have known this that does not prevent or prevents heat from <coughs> retards.
across it. Then there is something known as a throat insert. This is for the thermal protection of uh, the throat cross section. We will come to that a little later as to why we need this in terms of cooling requirement and other things. We will come to that a little later. Then port is the region where the combustion takes place and usually an igniter is again a solid propellant uh, which has uh, slightly higher metal content. Okay. And, uh, upon uh, providing it the electrical energy it starts to burn and uh, throws out this particulate matter and gases and uh, if the particle matter gets embedded here then uh, this is ho hot surface and then this ignites the propellant locally and then the flame spreads from the head end to the nozzle end. Now if you look at how the pressure time curve for this propellant will look like as I said this is a self pressurized system This will be the pressure versus time uh, plot for this kind of solid rocket motor. We will come to why it is increasing after it comes down to a certain value a little later. Now there are two kinds of uh, solid propellants that have been predominantly used. One is known as homogeneous or double base solid propellant and the other one is composite or heterogeneous solid propellant. Now homogeneous solid propellant in this case both the fuel and oxidizer are mixed at a molecular level and if you take a small section of this propellant you will not be able to distinguish between a fuel and an oxidizer. So in this case ingredients are molecular level whereas in a composite propellant if you cut a small portion of the propellant you will be able to see fuel and oxidizer. In this case uh, the oxidizer that is typically used is a particulate matter and therefore you will be able to distinguish between fuel and oxidizer. So in this case ingredients <coughs> this is a mechanical mixture. of ingredients now why do we have uh, two different kind of propellants uh, they are there to address two different kind of applications if you look at uh, uh, composite propellants usually they have a better uh, performance that is specific impulse higher specific impulse and they are preferred to be used in uh, strategic missiles and in launch vehicles okay. whereas if you look at uh, homogeneous propellants 
they are typically used in uh, tactical missiles okay If you look at the, the composition of the composite propellant, this will have uh, a fraction of metal loading in it because of which uh, if you have a metal loading then the exhaust will have a very strong heat signature and therefore uh, you do not find them being used in uh, tactical missiles. Tactical missiles are short range missiles and they are typically battlefield missiles. So if you have if you use this propellant in tactical missiles what will happen is you will very easily give away your location to the enemy right because it has a very strong sign heat signature and the enemy can find out where the missile was fired from and hit back the position. So you do not want that and therefore in tactical missiles you will typically use homogeneous propellant and uh, you, we will see that you can also uh, kind of reduce the visible smoke there are some things known as smoke suppressants if you add them the smoke that is coming out of the propellant will also be very small okay. So uh, <coughs> that is why homogeneous propellant although they have a slightly inferior uh, specific impulse compared to composite propellants they are still being used in tactical missiles. Typically the ISP of this would be somewhere between 2200 whereas this can go up to 2000 okay. Now let us look at uh, these two propellants in a little more detail firstly let us take up the homogeneous propellant. Now this has uh, nitrocellulose and nitroglycerin in almost equal percentages and that is why it is also known as a double base propellant okay because it has in a sense two bases. So here nitrocellulose uh, this is the fuel and it is a solid and has is a fibrous material nitroglycerin is the oxidizer and is a liquid okay. Now uh, this is this has uh, under uh, this is under oxidized by something like uh, 
0.3 kg per kg and this is over oxidized Both of them have uh, fuel and oxidizer in them. This is under oxidized, this is over oxidized. So, therefore, uh, this turns out to be the oxidizer and this turns out to be the fuel. Now, if you want to have uh, a very good performance, that is, uh, if you want to have a very good ISP, remember uh, we have talked about this earlier also. Uh, any propellant is always fuel rich primarily because we want the uh, C star to be highest, not just temperature to be highest, temperature will be highest at a slightly fuel rich condition right from the stoichiometric, but uh, we go to an extremely fuel rich case primarily because we want the molecular weight also to be lower. Now for best performance a combination of this. the N C or the N G N C ratio would be something like 6.5, but what is used is point 0.8. Any idea why such a glaring difference between what is used and what is going to give us best performance. Sorry? No, uh, if you look at uh, what is written here, this is a solid and this is a liquid, like, right? and when you mix them in uh, this proportion 6.5 it will become a slurry and will no longer be a solid propellant and if you want it to be a solid propellant with uh, good mechanical properties, you need to go in for uh, this kind of ratio. Why do we need uh, good mechanical properties for a propellant? For casting. Uh, yes, then? Okay. Uh, in some sense, all of it, and uh, if you notice. Uh, in this figure here, you have a propellant uh, that is either uh, that is uh, has to uh, go with the casing. Now, the propellant typically will be a very large mass in, in a rocket motor, typically of the order of uh, 80 percent will be propellant. So, if you have this and uh, if you have very large accelerations, right. Uh, typically in tactical missiles the accelerations can go to 10 g. If you have that then the propellant will extrude itself out through the nozzle if it does not have very good mechanical properties or if it is very brittle it will break up and uh, then in that will also give rise to problems. So, you would want uh, a very good uh, set of mechanical properties with uh, percentage elongation around 30 percent right and uh, yield stress and uh, tensile stress to be high also okay therefore it has to withstand not only uh, g loads and also if you notice the pressurization here it is a very fast pressurization right 
So that is also again a one more uh, this is like an impact load because this is a very short time in which this load comes on to the propellant. So you need to have good mechanical properties in order to withstand all these conditions and also during transport and other things the propellant should not uh, break up and uh, that would lead to rise with give rise to uh, catastrophic failures a little later when it is used. So you would not want all that therefore you have to have good mechanical properties. Now in addition to uh, NC and NG you also have something known as a stabilizer. Typically the stabilizer used is ethyl centralite why do we need a stabilizer if you look at uh, the nitrocellulose and nitroglycerin they are very reactive compounds now you are going to have them together in the same chamber and uh, you would not also want reactions to take place okay so therefore you add these stabilizers in small quantities so as to prevent reactions from taking place so this is in order to uh, prevent slow reaction and degradation with time if you are looking at a solid propellant for a military application it needs to have a certain shelf life okay typically of the order of a few years 10 to 15 years is its shelf life once you make it you can keep it and store it for 10 to 15 years if you want that uh, if you have these kind of reactive compounds you need to ensure that uh, over the period of time there is very little degradation okay. you cannot prevent it but you can minimize it and that is why these stabilizers are added Now in addition to these stabilizers uh, we also add uh, certain burn rate modifiers now burn rate modifiers are uh, chemicals that are added in very small quantities they are like catalysts. Uh, if you look at the rocket uh, literature they you will also find uh, rockets uh, I mean uh, the reference to these chemicals as both catalyst and burn rate modifiers uh, a catalyst is a substance that does not take part in the reaction but aids the reaction here if you are looking at a rocket motor uh, everything burns up so uh, the term catalyst probably is not very appropriate but it is still used uh, interchangeably okay uh, the typical burn rate modifiers uh, for uh, homogeneous propellants are lead salicylate lead salicylate and then lithium fluoride okay 
these are also used in order to get uh, the required burn rate that we desire from the propellant. Is this going to be good enough to make uh, this kind of solid propellant homogeneous or do we add to need to have something else? Uh, as I said it needs very good mechanical properties, so there is something known as plasticizer that is added to improve the mechanical properties. So the typical uh, plasticizer used is diethyl phthalate. And in addition to this there is something that is used in these propellants that is carbon black now carbon black is uh, nothing but uh, carbon that is used uh, this is also known as an opification agent if you mix all the other things except the uh, carbon black the propellant will be translucent in nature okay if it is translucent it can absorb uh, radiation right and it absorbs radiation and somewhere inside the material this absorbed energy is uh, released then uh, it can lead to ignition somewhere in the depth so you don't want that and therefore you will try to make it as opaque as possible using carbon black and a typical composition of uh, this heterogeneous uh, or homogeneous propellant will have if you see they they are used in nearly equal uh, this thing and therefore the name double base propellant also and then DEP stands for uh, diethyl phthalate NC and NG are nitrocellulose and nitroglycerin EC stands for uh, ethyl centralite okay and uh, a small quantity of uh, carbon black okay this already fills up so you can reduce one of it and add a little bit of carbon black to make the propellant opaque. Uh -huh. 
No, no, no. Uh, one of them you can add. You can add one of them and uh, that will give you certain burn rate. Increasing burn rate or? Increasing burn rate. There are also burn rate suppressors. Okay. Uh, I also talked about something known as uh, visible flame suppressants. So, a typical a visible flame suppressant is. potassium nitrate or potassium sulphate Now, let us look at uh, what is the uh, composition of uh, composite propellant. composite propellant or uh, heterogeneous propellant. Uh, as I said earlier, this is a mechanical mixture. Uh, you will have uh, oxidizer the typical oxidizers used are ammonium perchlorate. also known as AP, ammonium nitrate, then potassium nitrate, okay. these are the typical oxidizers. Then uh, you have uh, polymeric material that is used as the fuel in this case. So, the typical ones that are used are hydroxyl terminated polybutadiene then carboxyl terminated Butadiene, and you also have uh, polyurethane, okay. These are uh, typical polymeric material, they are also known as binders. In addition to uh, this fuel, you also add uh, something known as uh, curing agent. Uh, typically, you will use a monomer of this. 
and then you will tend to make it into a polymer by adding this curing agent. So, the typical curing agents used are uh, toline diisocyanate and uh, isoprene diisocyanate these are uh, typical curing agents that are used so as to make this into a long chain cross link polymer okay they also add uh, plasticizers here too to improve the mechanical properties like uh, DOA which is dioctyl adipate This oxidizer I said is around uh, is added this is a particulate matter. So, if you look at uh, the oxidizer uh, these will be particles ranging from uh, somewhere around typically 400 microns to typically 10 microns there is a distribution that we use and if you look at a typical cross section of uh, propellant this uh, what I have shown here is a simulated propellant that is I have assumed all the particles to be spheres uh, perfect spheres and I have simulated it for something like 85 percent uh, of solid loading that is 85 percent of this propellant is filled with solids. Uh, as you can see there are different sizes of particles uh, one is above 500 then uh, 500 to 355 and uh, all the way going up to uh, less than uh, 75 microns. Now, why do we need to have uh, this kind of variation in particle size that is primarily if you look at it if you have only large spheres you cannot have uh, a loading beyond certain fraction and if you have small spheres also you cannot have loading beyond certain fraction. If you use a combination you can go to a higher fraction of loading that is why we use this uh, kind of uh, coarse and fine particles uh, to get the required loading. Uh, as I said you also add something like uh, 12 to 18 uh, uh, 18 percent of aluminum is added. Now, this is added in a uh, composite propellant essentially to improve the specific impulse of the propellant. Uh, the specific impulse of the propellant uh, improves because if you add aluminum the chamber temperatures that are reached are much higher than without it. Okay. So, you will get the higher the chamber temperatures and therefore, your specific impulse will improve. Uh, this also has another role that is it is known to uh, be a combustion instability suppressant. Okay. We will talk about it probably a little later in the course. Now, you can see aluminum particles uh, that are in purple here they are in large numbers and are distributed all over the propellant. Okay. This is how a simulated propellant looks and if you look at an actual propellant uh, it looks something like this this is a scanning electron microscope picture uh, these are coarse particles here coarse a p particles and you also have uh, fine sized a p particle and also 
aluminum particles okay so all of it is present and whatever is not occupied by the solid it is occupied by the binder or the polymer so this will give rise to something like uh, 85% solid loading okay <clears throat> and the remaining 85 to uh, 86 percent solid loading or sometimes uh, 88 percent is also used. So, this ranges from 80 to 88 percent solid loading this is uh, you also have here two uh, burn rate modifiers uh, the typical uh, burn rate modifiers used are uh, copper chromite and uh, iron oxide okay. now uh, with this you will have a composite propellant now we have looked at uh, both the uh, composite and uh, homogeneous uh, propellants uh, in the next class we will look at uh, how uh, this can be used in a propellant and what is the burn rate that one can get with these propellants and what is the function what does burn rate depend on okay and uh, uh, also how does pressure vary in a rocket motor because of this all that we will look at it in the next class thank you. <coughs>